Okay, thank you very much, thanks. So thank you very much for inviting me today to speak about something that I'm really passionate about. Um, uh, also, what a wonderful hall as well. I'm glad that there is some female presence here in the hall. <laughs> Maybe not as much as should be, but uh, there. Also, I was. Go I am later on. I'm going to try and find Dennis Law, a uh, very, very famous in Aberdeen. Um, was born where I am near near the area where I. Oh, he's there. Okay, fantastic, excellent. <laughs> right there. Uh, I feel at home now, thank you. So, okay, we'll crack on. Before I start, I'm just gonna mention a few things. Just buckle up, there is, it is a long journey. So, the presentation contains the images of mummified Egyptian people, and I will tell you later why I'm saying that. So this is just a content warning. Anybody would like to leave? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay, nobody. Okay, today I'm presenting my personal opinion based on my experience and I'm not talking on behalf of my organization or on behalf of the Egyptian population, which is huge. So I'm just uh, giving my personal opinion. Uh, we might have more questions at the end of this presentation than when we started, which is, um, uh, I think, I believe a good sign. Uh, and this presentation does not promise to have all the answers or any, uh, and this might uh, not even be the correct question to start with. So uh, I'm using the term mummified people instead of mummy to avoid the continuation of objectifying uh, the mummified Egyptians, which is something that has been uh, done for many, um, many years, many decades, and um, hopefully we will this will stop um, eventually, I believe. So um, the first thing is, uh, um, I'll take you far away <laughs> to Egypt. Uh, this is the Egyptian Museum where I worked uh, and where I did two things that I'm gonna be talking about today, which is the display of the Egyptian uh, mummified people and also research on the Egyptian mummified people. So I'm not saying I haven't done anything at all wrong, but <laughs> okay. So um, the topic of the hour, every hour, uh, this is uh, started from, I believe, round about, uh, possibly before, but round about 2006 when the uh, Manchester Museum put a warning sign, a content warning sign, just before you go into to see the Egyptian um, mummified, uh, the Egyptian, actually the Egyptian gallery. Uh, and they said there are human remains there. And this was Christina Riggs, who was the curator at that time. And um, everybody was so appalled. How could they do that? Why would they do that? We have been doing this for many years. And of course, this... Um, the display actually displayed um, mummified astro, which we are going to see later on, um, totally naked. There was nothing to cover her, nothing at all. Uh, and, and this was really, um, it was a controversial decision, let's say it this way. Um, 2010, this is the article, museums avoid displaying human remains out of respect. And then later on here in 2021. So this has been going on for some time. So, ethical questions. Um, if Egypt has always displayed mummified people in most Egyptian museums, why do we discuss the display of mummified people in museums outside Egypt? I mean, clearly, if the Egyptians are okay with that, why do we bother? Are we trying to show our ethical superiority and prov prove that we care more um, or impose our own ethical standards or another culture? Uh, what about the ethics of uh, scientific research on mummified people housed in museums outside Egypt? And you can see that I'm emphasizing outside Egypt because inside Egypt is different and things happen uh, in different ways in both uh, different locations. So colonial legacies, uh, you probably were wondering when this is gonna come in. So it is here, colonial legacies. Uh, Black Museum, first museum uh, to be opened in Egypt, uh, in Cairo, and um, again opened the history of Egyptology. It's totally based on um, colonialism. And um, every time we look at it, we, we discover that there were no Egyptians involved. There were no Egypt, there was also the, the separation of modern Egyptians to ancient Egyptians and um, disruption within the continuity. Everybody said, oh no, the modern Egyptians, they were called them Arabs, they are not the ancient Egyptians. And, and of course, this uh, has been proven to be wrong. You will see here some form of culture appropriation with the Spanish uh, consul in Egypt uh, here dressed as a mummy inside the Bulak Museum. 
Um, so mummies have been um, on display, or Egyptian mummified people have been on display since the beginning of museums, uh, which are also colonial structures, by the way, uh, in uh, in Egypt for very for very long time since the start. Uh, this is the Giza Museum. So this is. Um, Another museum that um, Bulak was was flooded every now and then, so they decided to move everything to Giza until they built a, a museum just for the purpose of actually to be um, a museum where objects are on display. So all these cases that you can see here contain human remains that were found uh, in uh, archaeological uh, excavations uh, and they are on display. Um, Egyptian Museum in Cairo, where the, the pink building I showed you at the beginning, and then again when everything moved there, uh, human remains were on display. Um, but also to follow the story that uh, the first uh, director was uh, Mariette, and um, we only get an Egyptian director of the Egyptian Museum, uh, Mahmoud, ha Mahmoud Ali Hamza, in um, 1941. So all this time, it was um, Egyptologists from all over the world that they were the directors of the Egyptian museum, and Egyptians did not have any say on what the museum contained or how to display things, and nothing of the sort. So museums continued, or the museum in Egypt, uh, actually all over, continued to display human remains. And then, at, that, at some point in 1980, a military operation called Eagle Claw to rescue 52 American uh, hostages held in Tehran ends, the eight, um, ends with eight US servicemen dead uh, and no hostages rescued. So we're going to go further away to Tehran just to tell you how uh, museums and politics are very hand in hand. So uh, Egypt hosted the former Shah, actually he died in Egypt as well, uh, and um, his grave is there, and Iran paraded the bodies of the dead American soldiers. Uh, Egypt, uh, at that time Sadat, which you can see him here, this is Mubarak, uh, and this is Jihan, his wife, uh, and this is Naguib Mahfouz, if you ever read any of his uh, books, I would certainly recommend them. So Iran, back to Iran, uh, Egypt, uh, sorry, back to Egypt, Egypt, uh, Sadat said, criticized Iran's action, mentioning how unethical, un-Islamic uh, it is to show the bodies of dead people. Iran replied, ooh by the way, dead people are on display in the Egyptian museum. And this was a bit embarrassing. So Sadat ordered the mummified kings and queens uh, to be taken off display. So this is the story of taking them off display, uh, possibly for the first time in many, many years. And you can see here that, that the communications regarding this was different in Egypt and different outside Egypt. So in Egypt, it was faith. This is not non-Islamic. We're not going to do that. Outside Egypt was about dignity. And you will see this creeping up again and again. So Egypt's uh, royal pharaonic mummies, this was uh, in 1980s. Um, and in the, in the Times and says here, the, uh, the display will be back on display with dignity. And you can see here that even Sadat's decision wasn't actually a written decision. It was just, I'm assuming, a phone call. Uh, because there is no written document to say, um, it's, not, it's not a presidential order, as we can uh, say. And this was, um, what, yeah, the decision to open the mummified again to the public required delicate political maneuver. So how political is that? So, um, this is where I joined the team. This is the first and the second Royal Mummy Galleries in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. I'm not sure how different that looks like from the non-dignified way that they were uh, presented um, previously, uh, but this is how it was. Uh, it is presented until they were moved to a different uh, museum. Um, January 2021, Al Azhar, who is the um, the head of the or or the the authority in Islamic uh, fatwas, which is Islamic decisions um, in in Egypt, and they say here the the sheikh said um, that it is it should we shouldn't be extracting the bodies of the ancient pharaohs and putting them on display in return for dollars from visitors uh, is forbidden, which also include um, excavation as well. 
But this has been fantastically wonderful for, in, for Egyptians, for modern Egyptians. The, tra the, the, the parade transporting the remains of the pharaohs, as the BBC mentioned it here, and this is an iconic image that will live with the Egyptians for many, many years. Uh, it was, um, it was um, a strong feeling of nationalism, strong feeling of this culture belonged to us and we own it. Um, and you can see the mummies were moved from uh, the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Uh, every time I say mummies, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> it, just, it is just habit. Uh, the mummified people were moved from Egypt, from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo in this sort of vehicles. Uh, nobody can see anything inside them. They were moved to um, a new museum. So when we display the human remains, the mummified people. What, what is our reasons? So, first of all, we think their names, we, th this is what they wanted, their names will remain. And the other reason is education. We want education. So keep these in your mind, and then we're gonna go back to that. So this is Tahiru, and this was during an exhibition in Aberdeen. And you can see this actually exhibition is online. So you can go and if you check um, Aberdeen University Museums and Special Collections website, you'll be able to see all parts of this exhibition. Uh, and you can see that there's a particular section just for her name. Tahiru lived in Egypt. And um, it is so important to mention her name because this helps her. So I wanted, what is this? How did this come about? What is, how did this idea started? And then I found that Budge, who was um, keep, a curator of the British Museum for many years, and you can see the dates here at the bottom, um, he mentioned, let alone, let's not mention that, so talking about the modern Egyptians and how they were stealing everything and um, <laughs> it's working for the British Museum. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the bridge, the, the, he mentioned here how important the name is. And I was so excited because the idea of the name the, actually started uh, by me, a mention of Budge in 1920 in, his, in this publication, as you can see there. We have done that all the time. It is the name, the name, we're keeping the name. In, even in the Cairo, um, in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, when we put the mummies, um, the, the mummified people on display, we also mentioned that we really wanted their name to remain. Uh, the same thing happened in, uh, in Aberdeen as well. Uh, this is just to show you that mummies, uh, mummified people can also be uh, associated with so many different things, including uh, climate change. They were targeted there in Spain. And so, if we don't display mummified remains, what do we do with them? Shall we ask for them to be returned back, so repatriation? Um, I'm giving you some, uh, one example here of um, University uh, College Cork, and they repatriated uh, mummified human remains uh, to, back to Egypt. And they had these negotiations with the state. So remember, there are states and there are communities. There are state, the Egyptian state, and there is the Egyptian population, the Egyptian community. And Mustafa here, who is Mustafa Waziri, he's the uh, Secretary General of Egypt's uh, Supreme Council of Antiquities, said during this negotiation, he just looked at us and said, we have too many mummies already, we don't need yours. And this is published, I can give you this uh, link later on. Okay, so just keep this in mind. The other thing here, you can see that there is, the, at that part of the repatriation of that uh, uh, project, they also repatriated canopic jars. And the canopic jars also contain human remains. So just keep this in mind, because it's not just the, the full bodies, but also you will have all these different um, human remains. So talking about community, so what actually the community wants? So looking and, and doing some research, did the Egyptians say that they wanted the human remains back, that they wanted the mummified people back? You can see Bassam al shama and he's, um, he's actually a tour guide. Um, and there is something called the proposal of mummy return. So actually some of the population want uh, the human remains to return back. In a recent visit to Manchester, where I believe that everything started, sort of, in the UK, uh, Astro is now on display. 
you can see her here. And um, there is this sort of clarification of why we put, um, why, why she's displayed this way. And also mentioned that CT scanning has not been um, on display for, for people to see, for visitors to see, because they think that um, uh, we have undone ancient rites and seen her in ways that were never intended. So this is also, thank you, this is also important. Um, Manchester Museum, this is the golden exhibition, the golden mummy exhibition. So you will see two different things. One thing, we are very ethical, and the other thing, we are gonna do an international exhibition and all the income will just come to the museum, but there is no consideration of sponsoring, for example, Egyptian curators or, spon or um, having any collaboration with Egypt whatsoever. So Manchester uh, Museum, the Golden Mummy Exhibition, not co-curated and 0% input from the Egyptian community in Manchester. You can go uh, and see it, it's on now. And uh, the mummy, uh, this is the mummy wasn't worth keeping. This is actually Petrie. This is a quote from Flanders Petrie, the so-called father of Egyptology or archaeology. Uh, and he said that the mummy wasn't worth keeping, uh, but of course I kept the head for comparison. Um, just so you know what were the ideas at that time. Uh, scientific research, I'm just going to talk quickly about scientific research. So many different projects uh, regarding scientific research. Scanning, we mentioned scanning before, CT scanning. Do we, I, I, maybe we should do it just because I do like the idea of having a record for conservation, uh, but maybe not for display. Um, have you heard of Takabuchi? This was a research that was published uh, and you can see here that the, the um, um, publication mentioned the DNA is more genetically similar to Europeans rather than modern Egyptian population, again trying to separate modern Egypt from ancient Egypt. And when you go and get um, any uh, sort of um, a reply or any comments, you go to different scholars, but never Egyptian voices. So another research, uh, about the voice, if you haven't seen this before, you can search for it online and I'm not gonna um, put this on because um, I don't think it is ethical. So again, headlines like the mummy speaks, here sounds from the voice of an ancient Egyptian priest. And I heard that the first time I heard about this research was on Radio 1, BBC Radio 1. So you'll see how uh, this become very, very unethical. Um, and of course, the Museum Association, I think almost immediately after that research was, was published, uh, the, the Museum Associ Association came up with new research into Egyptian mummies lead to calls for major uh, ethical review because we can't really continue doing this. And of course, leads here, and I'm not really picking up on leads just for any, it's just, it's just an example. Uh, and leads uh, give this uh, statement that if this is gonna allow us to do more research, uh, it is welcome. Leeds collection here, and you can see this is part of their policy, and it includes display, research, and teaching. So these are the three things. Very quickly, I'm going to go through that. And again, if you want to talk to me later, please do. Um, so uh, Egypt Dispersed Heritage, a project that has been um, run by uh, Heba Abdegawad and Alice Stevenson from UCL. Uh, and they produce these comics in together in, in collaboration with Egyptian artists. Uh, you can see Basim is here and this is Heba. Uh, and you can see all the connection, all the uh, discussion between the two scientists and then um, no voice for the Egyptians in the scene. I put the translation there. I will have to ignore this and I will end up, <laughs> but I'm happy to share them with you. <laughs> okay. And I'll just put these, the points to ponder here for us to have a look at them for some time. So uh, museums that do not display human remains do exist, by the way, and they are there and thriving. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is a quote uh, from uh, Jack Lawman, who is the CEO of the Royal British Columbia Museum in Victoria. Um, and 
the other point is important for education. What about teaching the Victorians without displaying the Queen Victoria herself? Do we do that every day? Yes, we do. We do a lot of Victorians. Uh, can we consider consultation with Egyptian communities in the UK? Why not? Uh, can we also think about putting labels in Arabic for the Egyptian objects on display? Uh, it is, is it possible to have an ethics committee? This is a sort of half-baked idea that I still have, but I haven't really managed to formulate this in a, in a solid way. But you can help me maybe today. So I, I have a problem with getting samples from museums outside Egypt and actually working on these samples. Because in Egypt, you're not allowed to take samples outside the country nowadays. So we already have samples, we already have human remains that are here, but we know that the ethics of them be coming out from Egypt is not actually all good. So is it, is it, is it ethical to use these samples knowing their history in doing research now and publishing it without going back? So for example, if, if Egypt had the remains of um, Robert the Bruce, and they did a research on this without consulting us here. And then they come and say, he was actually Viking. How do we feel about that? Okay, so the last point is uh, museum ethics. The, the museum, uh, museum ethics need to be updated regularly as ethics are not fixed. So we develop uh, and this is what we do. So thank you very much. So sorry if I took longer. I <laughs> think that's it.